Hello and welcome to the Bible for Worship at St. Paul Lutheran Church on this fifth Sunday after Epiphany when the preaching text is written in the prophet Isaiah chapter 40 verses 21 to 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is the Lord who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see, who created these? The one who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name. Because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not grow faint or weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This remarkable poem, this hymn, this psalm from Isaiah of the Exile comes from a time when Isaiah addressed a people who had languished in Babylon for two generations, surrounded by the powers of Babylon, political powers, economic powers, living in a people with a different language, and especially living in a place where the gods were different. A place where another psalmist said they taunted Israel. Sing for us your songs of Zion. And indeed, Isaiah of the Exile sings this one. And in singing this song, the prophet draws in all of the mythological imagery that props up the gods of Babylon, the gods who would taunt Israel, and says, don't you know Israel from the very creation? Don't you know from the founding of the earth, from the foundations of all that is. This is old wisdom, what I'm telling you about the Lord, the God of Israel. This is the one who sits above the circle of the earth and looks so the inhabitants look like grasshoppers. This is the one who stretches out the heavens like a cloth above the earth. And that's not the imagery of Genesis 1. But mythological imagery, perhaps designed to talk not about the way God created, but to talk about the way the Babylonians might think some other God created the firmament. 
This is the one who blows like a wind across political powers and they wither and die like the fields before the powerful, hot, blazing east, Hamsin wind that comes down off the desert steppe. This is the one who numbers the very host of heaven, every star, and can gather and assemble them, call them to their positions one by one, and because of his might, not one is missing. In a mythological account, each of these figures would be a different god, and they might compete, they might argue, they might do battle, they might marry, they might do all kinds of things, but for Israel, it is the Lord who is in all of these places, above the circle of the earth, stretching out the heavens, blowing the winds, numbering the stars. The Lord, the God of Israel, in any mythological framework, is really, really big. And if you want to think in that mythological framework, although Israel does not, all of mythology throughout Israel's history ends up being converted into the story of Israel's God, who is the Lord of heaven and earth the Lord of history. But if you want to think in those mythological terms, because you're living in a culture that does that, then consider that as big as the Lord is in these mythological terms, and as terrifying as it could be to be confronted by that Lord, creator of heaven and earth, the Lord of Israel turns all of that to your good. Turns all of that to support you in this place. God is the almighty creator and never tires of both creating and recreating even you in this time and place. God is everlasting, filling all of the universe from end to end, beginning to end, fills everything, and is so big that there is no smaller power, no pretend divinity, no imposter God who can challenge this Lord. And this Lord turns all of that to the faint and to the powerless, like you. And they will soar like eagles and run the race, the race of exile, the race of return back to the homeland, they will run the race with endurance. When you're in exile and all those powers loom over you in every possible way and you feel so very, very small in the midst of that. Then bigger isn't just better. But when the bigger God is on your side, that is the best. God bless.